everybody. It's about time I put some of these meats I've been making to good use. And Mardi Gras is just a couple of weeks away, so today I'm making this savory and satisfying jambalaya that everyone's gonna love. So let's get started. Here's an optional step that I like to do in this recipe. I've got the chicken stock here that I'm going to be using later. And I'm also going to be using shrimp in this recipe. So I get my shrimp shell on and then I peel them myself. And now I've got all of these shrimp shells. And if I add them into my chicken stock and I bring this up to a simmer, let it go three to five minutes. It's gonna pull a ton of shrimp flavor out of those shells and I'll have a nice compound stock to use in this recipe. Again, this is totally optional if you wanna just use chicken stock, vegetable stock, turkey stock, you're gonna do just fine. But this is just gonna add another layer of flavor to this. And keep an eye on this because this will foam up and overflow just as soon as you turn your back on it. Let's take a look at the cured meats that I'm going to be putting in the jambalaya today. And these are going to bring a whole lot of good fatty, savory flavor and a lot of rich smokiness as well. I'm going to start here. I've got about a quarter pound of some thick cut bacon. Now, this is not something that I made myself this time, but the rest of the stuff here I did make, and you can find these recipes on the channel. Now, here I've got some homemade Cajun andouille. And depending on when you're watching this, this recipe might not be out just yet, but it's coming soon. I've got some of my homemade shoulder bacon or buckboard bacon. And here is some wild turkey smoked sausage that I made a little while back. So I'm going to cut these up here. I'll use maybe a quarter pound of this on do it. Look at that beautiful grain in there. And this is one where this casing is not really something that you want to eat. So I'm actually going to remove the casing. That's a real thick beef casing and it's gonna be tough yeah that stuff is real leathery from a long long smoke I'll get rid of those casings then I'll probably just cut this into some quarter rounds kind of thick and this one is mainly in there for its flavor it's got a ton of garlic and a ton of smoke and that's gonna bring in a ton of flavor now I'll cube up my buckboard bacon all right now all of these are gonna go in real early because I want to pull a lot of flavor out of there and I'll save that turkey smoked sausage till closer to the end because I want it to keep a lot of flavor in the sausage and also have a nice firm texture. So we've got a lot of ingredients going on in this one so stay with me and of course you can find the recipe down below in the description. So aside from those cured meats I've also got some chicken and this is boneless skinless chicken thighs that I've cut up into kind of one inch cubes but you cut that up any size you like you can even use whole pieces of chicken here I've got some nice wild cut shrimp and here is the trinity and that is equal parts of diced onion diced celery and diced bell pepper and amounts here aren't really that important you make this however it suits your taste. There is no such thing as authenticity in home cooking like this. About the only thing you really need to pay attention to is the ratio of rice and liquid so you don't end up with a real pasty jambalaya. 
And speaking of rice, I've got a couple of cups of rice that I'm using today. And I like a nice long grain white rice for this. So this is jasmine rice, and I like it because it's not so starchy that it'll make the jambalaya sticky. And it doesn't get mushy quite as easily as some other rices. For seasoning, I've got a couple of cloves of garlic. Here's a couple of tiny bay leaves. So just one normal size bay leaf would be just fine. I've got about a tablespoon of some smoked paprika. That's just going to add more smokiness, more pepperiness, and a little bit of cayenne pepper. And you add as much or as little as you like of that stuff. I've got a bunch of green onion here, and I will use the lower kind of white and light green section here and actually throw that in the pot. And then I'll use the dark green sections for garnish when it's finished. And then tomato is optional. I like a little bit of stewed tomato in mine, so I've got about a cup of that here. And I also like a little fresh thyme in this, but I hate plucking little thyme leaves. So I just kind of take some sprigs of thyme, tie them together in a little bouquet, and I'll just throw that in there. And then when it's done, I can pop all those stems out of there in one go. I'm going to put a little seasoning on these shrimp right away. They're not going to go in until close to the end. And I want a little seasoning to soak in, so you use just salt and pepper or some Creole seasoning. I'll just toss that in, and these can go right back into the refrigerator until it's time to put them in. So I think that is everything. If I've missed something, I'm sure I'll find out along the way. So let's put this jambalaya together. Let's get started with a nice dollop of bacon fat. You could use some lard, even some butter, but you want a nice fatty fat. We're not shying away from those saturated fats in this one. But don't worry about it. With the energy you get off this, you're going to be able to run 10 miles. No problem. Now let's get in there with our onions. Tiny little pinch of salt there. We're going to cook these onions kind of hard over kind of like medium heat and kind of long. We want to get some color on these and pull out a whole lot of really nice flavor. Keep those moving around pretty frequently so they don't get too dark on any one side. All right, let your onions start to get nice and brown, toasty like that. Get in there with that bacon. I'm gonna cool those onions down a little bit quickly because they're right on the edge. And that's how you want them. Right on the edge of being too done. Get that bacon or lardin if you've got lardin. Can't really find that out here on this coast. Keep that heat up. At least medium. I want to get the bottom of this pan to get a little bit crusty. I'll go ahead and throw my buckboard bacon in there as well right now. Might even bring that up a little over medium. But keep it moving. And as that's cooking, when you start to get that nice sticky crust on the bottom, just scrape at that stuff, pick it up, get it mixed in. So you can make some more of it and so it doesn't just burn there so stir and scrape at that nice fond on the bottom of the pan there now once that's starting to get nice and crusty looking go ahead and get in there with that andouille keep that frying now let's go in with the bay leaf and that garlic I just want that garlic cooking for a minute or so just to get the oil to kind of pull out a little of that garlic flavor. But if you go too long, it's going to burn and bitter on you. So give it a minute or so, and then we'll get in there with our other veggies. Now let's get in there with the rest of that trinity. There's the celery and our bell pepper. Little pinch of salt on there. All that meat's carrying a lot of salt, so we don't need a bunch. And we'll give that a couple of minutes just to soften up those veggies a bit. Get in there with the chicken now. Now 
And once that chicken is brown just a little bit, you're gonna get in there with that rice. And this is dry rice. I didn't rinse it at all. This jasmine rice doesn't need a lot of rinsing. I want that rice to get all coated in that delicious grease, <laughs> for lack of a better word. And fry a little bit. Let's get in there with the paprika and the cayenne. And now we'll put in the stock. And with this rice, I'm gonna go one and a half cups of stock per cup of rice. So my two cups of rice in there, I'm gonna go with three cups of stock. And along with the moisture that's gonna pull out of the chicken and the tomato that I'm gonna put in there now, that should be enough liquid to get that rice cooked and not be too soupy. Now I kick in the rest of that tomato. Now let's bring this up to a simmer. Once I get a nice simmer on, I'll go ahead and drop that bouquet of thyme right on top. I'm gonna cover that up, bring that temp down nice and low. And that's probably gonna need to go for about 30 minutes before we add in the last ingredients. All right, we're just 30 minutes in. That is looking real good. Now right here at the end, we'll get in my shrimp, those light parts of the green onions, not my wife's hair, gnarly. And that finishing sausage there. That's that turkey sausage, turkey and apple smoked sausage. Sweet and smoky. That one came out real nice. I'll just stir those in. I'll cover this up. I don't like my shrimp to be too done. So we're just gonna get those shrimp hot and cooked. Five, ten minutes, and then it is on. looks great let's get a little bit of everything going on here come on Ooh. check out that bite mm -hmm. that's a hearty dish <laughs> and you could probably tell that I like my jambalaya pretty meaty that's a carnivore in me but you make yours as meaty or as ricey as you see fit. Sausage and seafood are always a great combo and the chicken fits right in with that profile. It's got a nice spiciness to it, but I always like to add a dash of some good Louisiana hot sauce to mine. bumps up the heat and the vinegar and the sauce cuts right into the richness of the jambalaya and makes it kind of dance on the tongue just a bit. <laughs> I love a good one pot dish and this one is perfect for feeding a crowd. And you can get it ready early so you get to enjoy the party too. So whether it's Mardi Gras or Super Bowl or any other day of the year, I really hope you try this and I know you're gonna love it. Thanks for watching.